lost in the quarterfinals. <laughs> but that's still two out of three. It's pretty good. <laughs> so you would want to try and go 6-0. And if G2 was able to win this one and their final game against Griffin, they would be the first non-Korean team to go undefeated in the World's Group Stage. While that is true, Jan, one of the problems that G2 inherently has is that when the games mean less, they <laughs> have more freedom to experiment with things that they've been theory crafting, trying out, playing with, and given that now they're primarily playing for first seed and you know that G2 is saying we don't care who we play against in the quarterfinals, we're confident that we can beat anyone, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some new picks coming out in this matchup. Would not surprise me either, but so far for the bands, we see something pretty standard up against G2. The Yumi's a new one, but the Rakan taken away from Mickey. The Yasuo, of course, something that Cloud9 just does not want to deal with. I like the G2 Esports ban the Kiana. They got it last yeah. time. It went horribly, and I think it makes a lot of sense <laughs> for them to take it off the board this time around, and some respect to Sneaky by taking the Heimer away as well. Yeah, and I also think there's been a lot of conversation with C9 about whether or not they should be starting Sven Skarin or Blabber, or whether or not Sneaky should be on an AD carry or a mage, but I think another important discussion for Cloud9 is what will Niski play? Because throughout the summer split, he showed the majority of his success on melee champions like Aurelia, Silas, Akali, or Kiana. So the Kiana ban is good. We know how nerfed Silas is. If I'm looking for a C9 victory, I would want to see them try and pick around him on an Aurelia or an Akali. But for now, it is the Kale. Could technically go into the hands of Licorice. We've also seen it in the bot lane in a single game in the hands of Teddy. So obviously can be used as a flex pick, but may already be set to go into the mid lane, especially if this Renekton does get locked in. But G2 do not hesitate to lock in the Rise as well as the Kai'Sa in their first rotation. Yeah, and Vettius, this is looking pretty G2 tryhard, right? I think, yeah. I think the 6-0 is very meaningful. I don't think Worlds is necessarily the time to do the happy games. We'll have to see with the rest of the draft going through here. But if this Renekton is locked in, I think that would be actually a good pick for C9. What does surprise you from G2's side? is the fact that they chose to prioritize the Kai'Sa over something like the Zaya, because yeah. multiple times during the regular season, season, we would see them pair up a variety of different supports with the Zaya, yeah. even if the Rakan was not available. So showcasing a slightly different priority, this could suggest right now that they're thinking along the lines of the Nautilus, who is up and available. If they don't feel comfortable, they could also do the Morgana, which is a pretty strong pick into the Thresh as well. And now with the Rek'Sai locked in, interesting to me that Cloud9 did not opt to pick up something like the Zaya. You talk about kind of that identity crisis and them not yep. knowing if they want to play mages or AD carries. And given that that has been, outside of Kai'Sa, the best in class AD carry, I feel like C9 must be looking for a mage bottom and G2 can just ban that Zaya away and limit some of the top tier options. Yeah, there's so much flexibility available in this game, knowing that if this game does go to late game, that Cloud9 will have sustained damage thanks to their Kale lock-in, which can go to either their mid or their top lane, so it's more known what's happening for G2 since Kai'Sa isn't a flex pick and will definitely be going bot lane. Ooh, the Civiban coming out from G2. I know this is something that was pretty popular earlier in the year, maybe even earlier this split, but after the nerfs kind of fell out of contention. Still showing that respect over towards Sneaky, though. And we talked about melee mid laners that Niski has prioritized a lot during the regular season. With the Aurelia being banned away from Cloud9, this is actually more directed towards Wonder in the top lane. This was something yeah. that he would often go towards during the regular season to act as more of a split pusher and lane carry, especially given as Perks is likely going to be playing more of the defensive scaling bot side of the map. And before today, before the Shen game the Licorice played earlier, he was the best performing top laner in this group in terms of laning stats. Mm -hmm. Found multiple solo kills, was always up in CS. And so to set him up for success by banning away two premier top laners feels like a good source or a choice from the side of Cloud9 is we might just, that would be a new one. The Mickey Blitzcrank <laughs> locked in on stage. I, I'm ready for it. Now, we have already seen a lot of Blitzcrank this tournament, primarily from RNG. We did get to see it from Fnatic as well. And we were wondering if it was going to spread out into other groups. This is an opportunity now for G2 to showcase some of their Blitzcrank mechanics and see how much the team plays around. Sneaky's Caitlyn. Jat, mm. uh, you got to break. It's the NA representative. You got to talk to me about this one. So, Caitlyn is a pick that C9 and the rest of NA played somewhat sparingly, but it was basically when they wanted to play very heavily around bottom lane and actually get a lot of early turret plates. So, in this composition, it may seem a little bit odd since they do have the Kale, but that would generally be used as like a bridging mechanism. So, you have a strong Caitlyn to get you through the early game, and then Kale would try and come in in the mid or late. 
but you heard Yamana talk about it on the desk. Niski's Casio wreaked havoc in Europe. Now he has to see the same yeah. if he can do the same as an NA representative on the world stage. That's a pretty big pick. So I was thinking that G2 could consider a Kled right now, just because they lack a little bit of engage, and I also think that it matches up very well into the Kale. But given that they're hovering through a variety of picks, it looks like the Rise will actually be sent into the top lane for Wonder, a champion that he did in fact get a pentakill on at the MSI group stages. And honestly, hoping to repeat that performance once again, all too crucial for G2 to try to close out cleanly in this group, try to make sure that they will come out as the first seed as we move later in the tournament. Now, something you were talking about, Jet, was how when they pick the Caitlyn, they often like to try and play through the bot side of the map. And interestingly, mm. this is something we saw a lot from C9 during the finals when they played up against Team Liquid. Mm. Sven Skaren was actually a lot more active around the bot side of the map when he felt that bot lane discrepancy, like in the form of Double Lift and Core JG. And he found a lot of successful opportunities, especially when investing a lot in that side of the map. Yeah, and I'm going to be curious to see the start of this game because we know Unfortunately for Cloud9, this will be the first time they haven't advanced to the quarterfinals since the last time Worlds was in Europe in 2015. And sometimes when that happens to teams, the pressure could come off and they can play a little bit more free. We almost saw it with GAM Esports yesterday when they jumped out to that early lead over Splice. G2 is a much more formidable opponent, a world's favorite looking to go undefeated in this group. But if Cloud9 wants to try and spoil that, now is their chance. And that's all you can say. It's time for a little bit of EU NA action. Cloud9 versus G2 Esports. Here we go. Berlin and Verdi alive and ready. Cloud9 versus G2. As you mentioned earlier, Jack, Cloud9 sadly already knocked out. But G2 playing for a perfect group, playing to lock in first seed. However, the level one going to be crucial here. Cloud9 clearly set up for a G2 play. It's the classic solo queue. Level one start. Group up in a brush, wait for the Blitzcrank to appear. G2 not going to overcommit into the enemy jungle. Or are Yet. They? <laughs> <laughs> really trying to hype up the drama. <laughs> How much mana will Mickey burn before he gets to lane, throwing hooks into random bushes? <laughs> will C9 be spotted in there? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. Looks like nothing's going to be happening at the level one mark. Uh, what's really interesting to me is I have very little experience with a Kaisa and a Blitzcrank lane. Because typically, when you pair something up with a Blitzcrank, you kind of want it to have an element of lane dominance. Things like Draven, things like Caitlyn pair up with it very well as well, and even Zaya to a lesser degree. But I feel like Kai'Sa is not a champion that if you land a hook, you necessarily are going to find that kill or pick on. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole just dilemma of picking Blitzcrank in pro. Landing successful Blitz hooks often has reduced chances if the other team has strong vision control or if they're extremely good players. And it's very hard to actually find the angles at the pro level to land several successful hooks. And on top of that, if the other team has lane priority, you can't hook past Dominion, right? So you have to find really interesting ways to try and weave around it. I think it will be difficult for Mickey to land hooks and all the more impressive if he ends up having a great game. And when you compare it to Zazel's Thresh on the opposite side, just higher risk, higher reward on the side of the Blitzcrank. Thresh also very focused on the hooks, but has the Lantern, has the play, has more defensive utility, whereas Blitz is, he doesn't land that hook, he's just trying to walk at you. Yeah, I will say when we saw this from RNG, it was also into a Thresh, and that's a spot where I think the matchup can be very good for Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank has a quarter second cast time on his hook, the Thresh hook is a half second cast time, so as soon as Zazel starts winding up, Mickey can just hook Zazel, right? If Zazel's, if he can see the Blitz, then Blitz can see him, and Blitz will actually get the hook on him. So that's another reason you might see the Blitz that early. It's like a real life cowboy draw, you know? <laughs> Who gets the draw first? Who's able to find that first shot will be very important in that matchup. Speaking of matchups, we've got to keep track of the junglers. Both of them have passed up towards the top side. Yankos and Svenska are in both level three. Kick gonna come in, Yankos. Now trying to find the knockup, he's there, Wonder, going to be able to follow up here. Prune Prison does manage to connect, Ben now has to run, he just leaves forward, that's the ferocious bite, first blood, and now Licorice is in trouble, Niski now coming up, the heal is there, they're trying to chase this one down, they've set their eyes on Yankos, but that means Licorice is going to go down, this is a disaster! C9 getting cut down on the top side of the map! 
So I'm also going to be really interested to see Cloud9 against HKA. <laughs> 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 That's just such a bad start for C9. Oh, oh, Literally yes. three deaths in a 2v3 in the top river, three and a half minutes against G2. Total disaster. And the thing is for Cloud9 is they want to try and play around their bot side of the map. This is where they have the Caitlyn and the Thresh. And you can understand Svenskarian wants to try and cover for the Kale. He can see that Yankos may look for an early gank up towards the top side, but they just overcommit. Kale at level two does nothing. And given the fact that Licorice is separated away from Svenskaren while Yankos is just beating down hey. onto him, he does speed Nixki into his death. Don't <laughs> don't discredit the Kale at level two, Vidius. The level three double buff Rek'Sai, super strong, also fortuitous for G2 that two kills go over to the rise, now tier completed. And that's the second game today where Svenskaren has died contesting that top Scuttle Crab when they have the weaker top lane 2v2. So the same mistake beats C9 twice here. This would be so frustrating for him, especially you're going up against Hail of Blades, Rek'Sai as well. So oh, just yeah. so much burst damage. And you think back, this is a dream start for G2 because we compare it to the last time they played up against C9. So hold that thought, Svenskaren will dash out, forced to use the control ward. This was not a great start to the game for G2 last time around. They got that kill on the bottom side of the map. He's going to kill him again. Yeah, well, he's a flashless kill. Licorice walking away. What can he dodge? The creep yeah. wave is there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So the thing with the flux bounces now is they're just going to bounce. Yeah, <laughs> so if you're close to the minions, Wonder knew what to do right there to secure that kill. Rise has been made much simpler in terms of his <laughs> mechanics, and a kill without flash, unfortunately, ends up losing his life. Yanko's now using this freedom. Going in, level four to level three. This might comes out from Fence Garen. He's just waiting on the bite. Yanko's gonna walk away, focus on the camp instead. Gentlemen, I was I was gonna make a point, I forgot what it was, and I don't know if it matters okay. anymore, to be completely honest. This game has been blown wide open. This is a 2K gold lead at five minutes in. Mm -hmm. And G2, I think, expected to be a dominant force in the world championship. But after the last game, I, I think I gave maybe C9 too much credit coming into this game. They're getting well, ripped apart. I think just the type of play that happened in the top river. Bad early game plays can have various levels of consequence. When you give the Hail of Blades, Rek'Sai, and the top lane rise that much advantage into an already disadvantaged top lane matchup, the rest of the map can just collapse around it. And then you add that to the fact that Yankos is an incredibly smart jungler. He's going to do everything he can to accelerate the game and keep that advantage up. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, Jat. Um, it's one of those situations where we've seen even multiple times against G2 where they fall to an early deficit but then bounce back. When you give this team an early lead, they are one of the best, if not the best in Europe, at ballooning those gold leads, especially between the 10 and 15 minute mark. And with C9 already at this disadvantage, they're going to have to make some pretty miraculous plays in order to reclaim some of this gold deficit. That's Garen waiting in the brush. Perfect work. Perks is going to spot that one out. Now Licorice has to run for the hills. The speed buff starts to fall away, and Yankos just gets to walk forward. Licorice so weak at this stage of the game. Caps can fish for the scatter of the week here. Can look to get something more. The knockup will it be in time. Blast him. He's just chasing him. This is where you're going to go. I'm going to chase right after you. The knockup's there. The scatter of the week fall. It's going to come out. Licorice now in trouble. Ferocious bite doesn't need it. Caps grabs another kill. Yeah, just a disaster game for Licorice. And we also got to keep in mind that top lane play lot put both solo lanes at a large disadvantage. So I definitely don't think Licorice should have been there to get that ward, knowing Caps is going to have mid lane priority. If anyone goes to check him, he's going to die. So, uh, this game was already worse, now it's just worser for C9. Worser, I like that. The good news is, Sneaky is doing fine on the bottom side. He's playing against a first-time Blitzcrank. He's, <laughs> this is the most you can ask for, 59 to 47. And I feel like that's the lane that Cloud9 need to get something done. You set it in draft, and now it's amplified by the early game. Licorice might die again. Said bot lane, buddy. He's going to get hit up. He's going to get taken out. He's Well, he's dead again, folks. That's it. 6 to 0, G2 dominating. Well, maybe this is the moment, though. Mickey, first time Blitzcrank, might go with his first death on the champion as well. Svenskaren going to walk forward and take him out. No chance to outplay that one. Sneaky going to get it with the last auto. So you may kill Cloud9 six times before 10 minutes, but you will not perfect game this team. They've successfully found a kill down oh, towards the bot side of the map. And at least it's something back, but with a 3k gold deficit already at eight minutes, they're going to have to keep finding these picks to claw their way back into the game. Yeah, definitely a very disappointing open for C9, but they'll want to try and play around bot side as much as possible. Sven Skarin, level five, has the 3v2 because they had just seen Rek'Sai top lane. So this was the correct play for C9 to make at the time. And then they're also able to secure the kill 
onto their carry. Yeah, the wave was actually in a fantastic spot for C9 there as well. They could have zoned perks away from a lot of farm, and you can see the discrepancy starting to be built between the two bot laners. And it looks fancy. Does not able to land the hex flash hook there from Mickey. Spence and walking down. He has been spotted on the orbit. The hook does manage to catch Zazel. Gonna step forward. They're not gonna flash out to safety. Spence Karen not gonna fish for the kill here. Niski already roaming down. Cloud9 have clearly figured out. They're focusing bottom lane but haven't gotten much else yet. Three tower plates in favor of Sneaky. So this is what we wanted to see from Cloud9 earlier into the game. Well, Sneaky and Zazel, when you do invest resources into them, can be that powerhouse, but now the gold on G2 has made its way bot lane. Yanko's flash out, not gonna find the knockup. Caps here. It's all about the hook from Mickey. Is not gonna connect. C9 are gonna be able to make it out of that one. Yeah, and this is the tricky decision point for C9 since their top lane is so ridiculously far behind. On one hand, you don't want to leave Licorice to just get killed over and over, but on the other hand, you need to try and find an advantage somewhere. So I think that's what Svenskeren has kind of opted to do. Yeah. Play around bot as much as he possibly can and just really just say good luck in League of Legends, Licorice, because that's what he's going to have to deal with this game. That is a completed Seraphs versus a Dagger. That's not fun. Well, it's... It's still, it's, all, the, it's still the Archangel stat. The Archangel stat. My apologies. Right, yeah. Yeah. My apologies. My apologies. Yes, the yes, silver yes, lining. Right. There you go. <laughs> 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 the positive side. Glass is half full, eh, Jet? <laughs> all right. So that's something. And once again, it's brutal. I think at this point, we're waiting to see. G2 are kind of the ones that need to up the pace of the game, continue to extend their lead. And it's just a matter of seeing what Cloud9 can do to match them. Uh, Boots 2 coming in very early for Licorice on the top side. Caps not wanting to walk to the Petrifying Gaze, not going to go all in on that combo against Niski. Yeah, and Caps has also been dominant throughout pretty much this whole group stage, actually. I mentioned yeah. earlier on the desk, he has the highest KDA of group stage players, which is definitely not what you would expect after watching Summer Split Caps, and Niski trying to make a play. Big Petrifying Gaze, Yanko's kick back, shut down, coming in, that's going to be key. Taking a bit of gold away, not, Hook not going to connect, Wonder now walking down, but he's walking down to the entire team, that's not what they want, G2! Bit of a happy moment in the clean play from C9 to get those two kills. There we go. Hey. That's the play that we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, it's playing around bottom side. It's the only thing that C9 can do to try and get this game. And then fortunately for them as well, Wonder teleported in to give that bounty back. But here comes Perks. Walking him down. One more auto's going to do it. Perks. Backing away. Niski's going to be in trouble in the mid lane. Caps trying to go all in. The barrier's there. Niski now running for his life. The auto is going to get him in the end. Caps finds the kill. Big play for Caps as C9 continues to try something bot. Perk's starting to lay down the damage. It's good. The Kale's there to mitigate the follow-up. The Rek'Sai goes in and comes right back out. It might not be enough though. Yankos is going to be able to find one kill. Tunnels his way right back out. Oh, and now C9 has to bail. Nice little flash safeguard over, but G2 uh, continues to extend their lead. So after C9 find a pretty successful fight in their half of the map, they unfortunately try to overstay, overcommit some of their aggression, and then immediately lose a bunch of kills all across the board, with Caps finding a solo kill, G2 finding another pick on the bot side. They'll then convert this into the first Drake of the game. And the largest lead at 10 minutes so far in Worlds 2019. Huge, huge game. 4G2 or in all of Worlds? I've been told all of Worlds. Wow, because we've seen some really one-sided games in terms of FPX versus J-Team. And honestly, just so far so good. But I think for G2, they do need to clean it up a little bit because these shutdowns coming in can start to help Cloud9 get back into the game. We're talking about G2, because they don't clean it up at all. How they succeed is by thriving in the chaos. They find terrible fights and somehow make it work. And while it often isn't great in League of Legends, it's definitely entertaining. It is absolutely entertaining. It's also nerve-wracking. I feel like if you're a European fan who's not 100% convinced, every game is anxiety-inducing. <laughs> yes. You're like, is this the one where they throw it all away on a random play? Is this the one where the hook connects? No. Nope. <sighs> He's first-timing, audience. Like, give him a break. <laughs> Wonder's rather strong. <laughs> Just a tad. Just a little bit. Oh, the Hex Flash hook. This is going to be the one. Goes in. Jukes. No. Nope. Uh, uh, well, he can keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there's, I'm surprised he's not going back be, for another one. <laughs> to be fair, this is the ideal situation for a Blitzcrank. You've got vision yeah. in the river. You've got control across your lanes. You can walk to any lane and throw blind hooks at no cost. So the irony is, uh, he's 
he's focusing the target that has no boots, yet he still can't land the hook. And I, <laughs> I don't know why, but I just find like, that so If there's funny. anything we learned from yesterday, is you don't mess with snakes, dude. Come yeah, on. I mean, that's true. That's very true. Well, regardless, G2 gonna convert I their I think advantage. he's trying again. He's in the spot. He is. <laughs> yeah. Riptailed is also going down. This is still, of course, Worlds. A serious, very, very serious game of League of Legends. 5k advantage. Wonder. Can he land it? Ooh. Sneaky sending him a warning shot saying, back off, buddy. No one kills my top laner five times in a row. G2 has all the people there, so... Um, looking like they want to reset, though, instead of trying to fight, even though they have a 5,000 gold advantage, 13 and a half minutes. <laughs> this is the most hex flashes in a single game I've seen from a <laughs> support <Yeah>. player. <laughs> all right, Cloud9, though, setting up on the bottom side. Sneaky's there, slowly but surely pushing in here. Tower plate's going to fall away in a moment, so maybe they can break this one down. But G2 are going to be able to drop the Herald before plates fall. Looks like get the charge off as well. So even more gold into their pocket, a 5k gold lead. Not enough for them. Next flash. A little bit more. Come Next on, Mickey. Flash. I want to see another one. Who's he waiting for? <laughs> Anyone. He doesn't know. I mean, that's true. Yeah. So far, his uh, hit rate with the hooks, incredibly low. He hit that one and when he got ganked and died. He hit that one in melee range against Sven Skarin. That's the one I've seen so far. Here we go. So... Oh. Infernal Drake is going to be spawning in about two minutes. Um, Cloud9 is not really in a position to contest, especially given, like, I was looking at Sneak and I was like, he's going to be the bright spark, but he's yet to complete his first item. And considering we're only 14 and a half minutes in, maybe if they can find a pick in the setup, that'll be their best opportunity. They do see Wonder doing the blue. Hook. It's going to land under Wonder. Mickey's coming in as well, but maybe they can just burst him down. They kicked it back. Wonder trying to roll more about. Can't get away from Sneaky, but Sven Skarin will grab the kill. So those are the kind of picks that we're looking for. You attack in the setup rather than at the actual objective because you know you're not going to win in the 5v5, so why take the gamble? Instead, just try and attack the enemy members when they're looking for this vision, looking to try and get these wards. Uh, and for Cloud9, that has proved to be a pick. Caps. Licorice can hit level 11 as well. He'll start potentially becoming a little bit more relevant. It's about, it's about stopping G2 from snowballing as much as possible, which considering it was, what, like 3,000 gold 10 minutes ago? Oh, here we go. Nisky's in trouble. The minions block the hook, though. They're not going to go for anything else. We'll back off. Grabbing the Tier 2 tower as well, continuing to maintain about a 5k advantage, despite the pick off to Wonder on the bottom side. Perk's now rotating in the mid lane, grabbing as many jungle camps as he can. Here he comes. It's coming. Hex flash. Splash. Nisky, the hook, Ooh. the flash. Okay. That one we can give. I think he was going to hit fine. that That's one. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's at, at least... 3% hook accuracy. Probably 10. Probably 10. We can check after the game. We have the technology. <laughs> we yeah. do have the technology. Well, not, not for accuracy. Like, we, we can have a... We can watch and, like, skip through the bot. The <laughs> some some I poor mean, intern is like, here, Jets. <laughs> Jet needs to know how many hooks he hit. <laughs> I can do it later. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I mean, my After favorite one, we had the the Nocturne stat as well, where Levi used yeah. 23 Nocturne ultimates in a game. So, like, yeah. we have those numbers, Dracos. We know how many hooks he threw. We'd yes. have to check the ones that land. Ah, yes. Fair. But I'm pretty confident it's zero right now <laughs> from the side of Mickey. I thought we were counting the one he had to flash away from. <laughs> it's too much no. U bias. Can't, can't <laughs> give it to him. All right, well, G2 are setting up on the play, but it feels like Cloud9 are Way! here. Hook! That's what you were talking about, the cast time. It doesn't add up. The kill has kept him alive, though. Mickey now has to run for the hill. Sven Skarin now going in the kickback into the midst of the team. A clean kick flash. Wonder now tries to escape the Sonic wave. Sven Skarin on a rampage coming in. Elder Dragon, or rather Infernal Dragon, has now been proc. The Ankles has to run for the hills. Healing up as much as he can. Goes under and will come right back out, but it is not enough. Cloud9 still able to try to come out on top in this fight. Caps on the backside, but G2 are split. Perks has taken out Licorice. Mickey now looking for the class, but Perks is taken down too. That's so many shutdowns for Cloud9. G2 overconfident in the play. Caps still has ult, but C9 would look to try and clean this up. He needs to make it out of this one. Pulls back, Lantern's there as well. It's going to go back to mid lane. Everything. Next flag. Here we go. Um. <laughs> so much suspense when he channels it. Now, considering the deficit that Cloud9 found themselves in. Wait, is this a teleport? Yeah, it's a teleport, it's a teleport flank. Here we go. So you will get Infernal the Infernal going drain. down. Nisky's going to get this one. Oh, Zazel's dead. That's the power of Syndra. Sneaky now needs to make his way out. Can't make it over the wall. That's a heartbreaker. Double kill coming through for Caps. We have another teleport come through from Licorice. No, now it is Cloud9 that are on the attack. But Nisky now needs to run. The hook. Will it land? No! No, it won't! <laughs> they, the game is definitely getting a little bit loose. And some of that is from C9. 
still finding ways to get kills. So actually just a good bait there by Zazel, yeah. knowing he has Kale to ult him once the GP kicks him in. And then Svenskeren gets a very good kick onto Wonder and waits until afterwards. If this game had been closer, C9 potentially would have felt better about it, but it's so hard to just judge the overall state of the game knowing how far G2 still is ahead. I mean, they denied an Inferno. As you said, Dracos, they got a bunch of shutdowns. And considering the state of the game, this is a fantastic play for C9. And it at least keeps them more relevant in the game. And so I think that if C9 can keep finding these fights and keep punishing G2 for honestly their overaggression, and the irony is the one hook that Mickey does land is actually the downfall of G2. So if anything, they need him to keep missing hooks. Otherwise, he's going to keep putting G2 in these situations. That's a narrative. I can get behind that one. <laughs> Mickey has to miss all his hooks for G2 to win the game. Okay. <laughs> I think during the summer split, oh, as Licorice is now in trouble, lapsed on. Has to walk away. Mickey, the target has been locked down, but it does count. Mickey will land the hook. Licorice will go right back to the fountain. And that was a play Caps was involved in. He's the only deathless player on G2. And I think during the summer split, Yankos was the one who seemed to go serious mode in a lot of their games. Yep. They'd be putting him on the Sejuani. He'd play tank duty. He'd keep everything going when everyone else was doing some of the crazy stuff. I actually feel like that's what Caps has been so far in the group stage, whether it's picking the Orion and controlling the lane, picking Rise in their chaotic early game against Hong Kong Attitude and having 11 CS per minute to later carry the game. And again, he's kind of doing it here. There was a bunch of roaming up top lane and Caps just stayed in his lane, got a big CS advantage, and now he's just throwing it around the map. I mean, the thing about Caps is, uh, and something we talked a lot about in our top 20 list, Jack, was how he's a player that internationally often doesn't really outshine a lot of the other star mid laners that exist in the world. And I feel like that in this group stages, I mean, even in the first half, he did get solo killed by Chovy. And I feel like he often proves how much of a gap there is between him and everyone else in Europe. And he's still looking to prove how much stronger he can be on an international stage. So with G2 guaranteeing their quarterfinal, mm -hmm. I am someone that still has my eyes on Caps and still think, yes, it's great that he's able to have these performances against the likes of a Niski, but can you still keep up with the likes of a Faker and can he ever overcome his eternal rival in Rookie? And, I mean, it's a difficult task to be certain. For now, G2 focused on this game. The hook will connect. The rest of C9 is down collapsing, but Perks is just free hitting on his support there. Zazel, Mickey X now going to be in trouble. Will get taken down. The Rise is now moving in. The Lantern is there. Niski wants to take it, but he's not even concerned. He's focusing instead. Another hook lands. That's clean from Zazel. And Niski is there with the damage to back him up. Now, the Baron is alive, and all five members of C9 are up and ready to start it. The Kale doesn't have TP, so Licorice really needs to start moving for Cloud9 to potentially come back into this game. Yeah, the DPS from Niski is pretty good on the Cassiopeia. They just have to worry about Svenskara taking damage. Caps and Perks would want to fight this if C9 tries to stay on it. Zazel getting lower and lower. Svenskara, no energy. Focus too much on the Baron. Does not have a lot left. It will reset. But Cloud9 still at a 5k deficit, but still fighting back at every single step. Yeah, I mean, they've pushed the game to a late enough point where one more big team fight from C9 could turn into a Baron and then actually an even game. So this would be the time where G2 needs to actually clean up their play, not have Mickey and Wonder getting caught up. This is actually the second play where Mickey has been going for something, gets picked himself, and then Wonder ends up showing up after the play has gone wrong. And he just gets CC locked by Niska's Cassio. Yeah, and Cloud9 are actually working much better as a unit than G2 are. And whenever G2 look for these picks, it's actually they who are getting punished. So if C9, we already talked about if they continue to do this, this is the second time they've now punished G2 successfully. So there's no reason not to believe that they can't keep doing it. And it's now up to G2 to, as Jack was saying, clean up their play, get a little bit more control over their side lanes, because I feel that one of the big things that's hurting them right now is actually managing and setting up their vision. And if they can do that and set up for Baron, then G2 should be in a better position. And fishing for a play. And you can't blame them. When you're behind like this, you have to go for some of these death brush plays. You're looking to catch out single members. And as much as we've been joking about Mickey's blitz rank, hasn't had too much of an impact yet. Whereas Zazel on the opposite side has hit so many clutch hooks, had so many good fights. But still, G2 with the gold lead here, get the lane priority. They set up for this Drake, and C9 just are not in a position to contest. Let's not forget that Wonder was 4 0 at the beginning of this game. Mm -hmm. Now he's 4 and 4. The entire Baron River is in control of Cloud9. And even though there is a 5k gold difference between these two teams, 
this gold gap doesn't feel as strong as it did earlier into the game, as C9 were baiting a bit of a Baronet. I did very much like how they put Zazel into the pit to clear out the control ward and put two people hiding behind the walls, believing that he was the tastiest of baits to <laughs> potentially force G2 into trying to fight another it's bad player. It's a game play. of psychology, now, Daniel Dracos. <laughs> But it's tough when Caps is able to freely walk down mid lane and press into your inhibitor tower. It's always going to be so hard to hold on to any kind of Baron Vision for an extended period of time. And Wonder just waiting in the darkness, looking for a single pick that could open up G2 to take the Baron themselves. And the wave control by G2 has improved kind of since that last ugly team fight we saw. So Wonder, as you mentioned, waiting down bottom in the fog of war after pushing in bottom lane. Caps taking the mid turret after pushing in mid lane. So. C9 isn't really as hidden Sneaky. as you would think. Tries to make his way out of this one. The K-Ulti comes in. Good timing. Major cooldown used. Cap's going to get a bit of poke back in exchange. Svenskeren has flash. Uh, awkward sonic wave, but good on Wonder to sidestep there. Both, play Both teams honestly just feel like they're setting up for a bigger play here. Mickey continues to fish with the hooks. Always have to respect the potential for this Blitzcrank. Has been a non-factor thus far, but... G2 set up more and more vision control. It will be easier for him to land this on an unsuspecting opponent. This next hook might lead to a Baron, Dracos. The <laughs> hook after this one. Uh, that was a bold G2 call. Right? It's it's the hook is leading to a Baron. Yep. Setup is there. Blue buff has been taken away by Caps, but C9 are just going to walk into this one. Miasma is down. Major cooldown. Yanko slowly but surely getting chunked away at Cloud9. Do not feel comfortable to walk in and contest this. That's the Baron for G2. The hook lands. They get the follow-up fight as well. They just got the Baron, and they take out Niski on top. So G2, after all of the crazy shenanigans that have been this game, will secure the Baron. It's definitely been chaotic, but another fight is ensuing. Vicky getting picked off, might buy a bit more time. G2, do they want to go for a bit more? They've used a lot of major cooldowns in the trade, but good pick for C9. Zazel, though, has to be careful. Perk's going to ult forward. So it's Garen leaping in and out. Good play. Uses the Resonating Strike plus the Safeguard to bait out the Zhonyas from Caps. And throughout all of the shenanigans in the 25 minutes of this game, the gold lead has continued to grow for G2, and I think a lot of that is just looking at the CS of Caps. She's still at 10 CS per minute. You can see his bounty just continues to grow. Even though Wonder has died four times, he's still sitting at the same gold value as Caps. So they're keeping their gold up, even if they're dying Kicked out in there. situations like Good play by Spencer. Spencer. Yes. Now has to back off, but we'll go right back in as soon as the team is there. The play comes out. Wonder now has to run for the hills. Kale out there as well, and Spence Garen popping off this game. So he did have the Seraphs up, chose not to use it, uh, either forgetting or believing that it wasn't valuable. Hook now lands caps. on the Caps. He's got no stopwatch. It's going to be big. Licorice now stepping forward, Doesn't but matter. just one <laughs> shot, Zazel. Perks now on the way in. Already marked. Licorice is going to get run down here by Perks. He knows there's no ultimate. Oh. Sven Skarin is just next on the list. Niski on the backside. Maybe they can hope to kill Mickey, but they're not going to be able to get anything else. The hook, it misses again. The ulti comes out for Mickey, but Niski still has to run. He's going to take him down. Sneaky, a nice shot to finish that one off. Rexile comes in, the trap now on the ground, Sneaky now needs to get away, he gets Ooh. it, that's the double headshot, point blank from Sneaky. Cloud9 are continuing to find these picks, this fight has been 3 for 3 so far, flashing from Niski. Clean turn away from Caps, almost got caught in the animation, would have gotten stunned up, Niski could have looked to finish, but the TP's now coming in, Niski either needs to win the play or get out, he's not going to get the opportunity, Viserys comes out, Caps burning down, will it be enough? Walks back into the Miasma, will not drop, such a close exchange. This game stays explosive. 31 kills now. This is a this is a messy in. game. This it is really is. So when you see G2 get such a, an overwhelming early game lead, expectations are that it's just a clean stop. It has not been that at all. Um, C9 have done a great job of finding picks, but mistakes like this from Wonder. Look at how overextended he is, and there are, yeah. everyone else on the rest of G2 is back in base. They're resetting like. Yeah, you would like to see from G2 them to be playing this more cleanly because I think you want to get stage practice of playing clean resets. Yeah. Especially if the, as if they win this game, they go into a potentially first seed clinching game against Griffin at the end of the day. And then the good thing for G2 is wherever Caps goes, things go well. And every time he seems to show up in fights, it works out. Blitzcrank, on the other hand. I mean, the opposite effect. What I've learned is that I don't need to ban Blitzcrank if I ever meet Mickey in solo queue. I, I think, think that he actually landed that hook. 
but we didn't see it, so it's oh. not a problem. If a hook <laughs> lands in a replay, did it really land? Yeah. <laughs> That's. <laughs> these are the questions, chat. This is the thing that ProView ruins, is fun questions like that. <laughs> someone could check. Someone yeah. could go back. But G2, yeah. <laughs> Sneaky's down. They're breaking in the top side. It could be a last desperate hold from Cloud9. They definitely have the tools, the petrifying gaze up and available. The hook will miss once again. Now they just need to hold on to these inhibitors for as long as possible, but so difficult when Caps can just threaten. Zazel continues to look for these hooks, look for these opportunities. Lukrish now stepping forward to clear the way, but that's the mid lane tower broken, and that's the hook onto Niski. That's huge. G2 now it's going to be able to walk in and grab at least two inhibitors. You miss all the hooks you don't take, says Mickey, as he's actually able to hook Niski in, and now they have two inhibitors down, working soon on the third. Perks left out of the realm warp has to be Wondering if it's personal. <laughs> something he said, something he did. <laughs> Next flash from Mickey, one more! Never mind. I don't know, I'm sorry, audience, I'm banning you. This could be the final siege, though. Once again, Cloud9 holding on as long as they can. Niski, 14 seconds on respawning. No doubt this should just be a G2 closeout. But maybe, maybe Cloud9 have something left in the tank. Now would need to have a big Ooh. fight. That's a very big Syndra. Ooh. Wonder just walks up and finds the kill onto Zazel. Niski now finally alive. Caps goes in. Is just gonna find the kill. No! Kill ult! I think he was trying to wait it out, but well played by Licorice. Licorice comes up clutch there to keep his AD carry alive. C9 doing everything they can to Next try flash. and keep this game going. Mickey, oh. unsurprisingly, misses another hook. Niski taking so much damage before he even gets to fire back. He's getting outranged by this Syndra. Scout of the Week will not connect on the Licorice. Wonder falling very low. The Kale. One and a half items. Can look to do a little bit more damage now as the hooks just continue to miss. Once again, it takes one connecting for this game to end. So as much as we're laughing at Mickey, so this C9 game will never end. Is what you're <laughs> telling me, Daniel <laughs> Trip. For the record, I do have a good relationship with Mickey. We're and I, and I want fun. you to know that I would say ten times worse to his face. <laughs> <laughs> he is the type. I mean, all these G2 players are. One thing I really like about him, how free they are to joke around. Yeah. Whether or not they are successful or unsuccessful. Caps, interestingly enough, like he started off being one of the most troll players. His interviews have been remarkably professional. This yeah. championship. The one we saw yeah. on stage, he's been so respectful of his opponents. He talks about the struggles he's potentially gone through himself. And honestly, is playing the cleanest of everyone on G2 as well. I mean, 7 0 6. No one is getting that bounty. And it has to feel good for him coming through. And the rest of the team, you, you said it. Caps is kind of the rock right now for the squad, and it feels like it's been rotating. Which member of G2 is the rock? It was Yankos in the regular season. I feel like it was Wonder more towards the end of the spring split. In summer, it was Wonder and actually Caps who were struggling, whereas it felt like Perks and to a certain degree Yankos had to pick up the weight. So I mean, the, the fascinating thing about uh, this team is that when we think to last year's Worlds, when it was, of course, a different bot lane with Hyun and Wadid and uh, the G2 that wasn't really expected to do anything. It was Perks and Wonder that really came into their own and showcased what they're capable of on an international stage when they play at their peak. And Caps didn't have the best tournament last year. Don't have time for this as Mickey looking for another hook. time. Yeah, we got, you're right, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um, but the important thing is, is what a lot of G2, when all five members play at their peak, that is when we really get to see the full power. But very rarely do we ever actually get to see it. Mm. We're definitely oh God, and he lands it! Sneaky! The KL out says no! Gonna take two hooks. Ben Scarin now going in the redemption. I think it's gonna be too little too late. G2 now looking to trying to clean up. Perks flashes in, trying to look for some fancy outplay. Zazel might just get cut down now. Licorice is next on the list, but Perks needs to get out of there. He's stealthed up, but no. Niski will grab the kill in the end. Wonder Realm Warping to the backside, and that's gonna do it. G2 from start to finish, absolute dominance. Cloud9 were able to fight back, but G2 held on to the lead. They'll close out the game and then look for that match versus Griffin at the end of the day. C9 unable to play spoiler as G2 rolls on. They move to 5-0 and and are now one game away from having the first 6-0 in group stage ever for a European team. Could be a huge accomplishment for this squad. And a lot of good moments, I feel like, for Cloud9 in that game. And it's just, it's unfortunate that the early game was so rough because the mid game was, they were going blow for blow. They just yep. fell yeah. so far behind early on. Just beyond disaster with that level two or three in the river. A 2v3, three kills going over as the three. 
Summoner's burned while Caps is able to free farm in the mid lane, and you can't give that type of advantage to G2 or Caps. So even though Cloud9 was able to scrape 15 kills back in the rest of the game, it was never really in question. And the good news is, if you're going up against G2 in a best of five, you'll probably never have to ban Blitzcrank. <laughs> I mean, that's true. But also, if you're... Uh...